1988, I became the sports runner physio for Fremantle Benfica, and then it just went on from there. And I sort of said to myself, there's something about this club. There's something about this club. We got to a stage where we actually folded. I think 2012 was our last year. If other clubs want me, I will not go into any other clubs because this is my club. If Fremantle finishes, that's me finish as well. You will not meet another person like me. I've got something like 9,500 pages of history plus all the strips. And one day when I eventually pass away, because nobody lasts forever, when I eventually pass away, hopefully we, we have a new club. Everything that I've got comes back to the club. And that's, that's me. The passion for football, mate, it's a disease. In Portuguese we say that there's one thing you don't change in life. You can change wife, you can change kids, but you don't change your soccer team, right? Basically that's it. Right? It's the most important thing in life, right? <laughs> it's true, it's true, mate, it's a disease. I would put God and football on the same page before actually being a Matilda and the way that I play as, as a Matilda, I learnt all the passionate side by playing in the neighbourhood with all the Portuguese, the Croatians and Italians. Where Australia, you know, in this place here, Perth, WA. <laughs> Did you get that today? <laughs> is that legal? <laughs> this is a homemade port. This is not wine, this tastes like whiskey. <laughs> my mum, my uncle, yeah, they've travelled a long way to come to Perth. I don't know why Perth, but yeah, they're all, they're everywhere. The majority of the Portuguese in Australia are from the island of Madeira. Uh, I couldn't tell you why. <laughs> they're very passionate, you know. All they know in Madeira is fishing and soccer. My old man, he was a fisherman, came over here, brought his family over. The beaches down Madeira are beautiful, so very similar to Perth. I reckon if you said Madeira to anyone else, they wouldn't know where it is, but now he's definitely put it on the map. I was lucky to meet him in 2004 at uh, the Olympic Games. So I went up to the coaches and the players and introduced myself in Portuguese. And because I went up to Cristiano Ronaldo, I said, I'm Madeline, so I'm from there, I'm, I'm Portuguese. And he was actually quite all right after he realised I wasn't some creepy stalking fan. <laughs> he actually thought, OK, she's a player that actually plays for Australia. So it was quite nice to have that experience with him. And when you have icons like Cristiano Ronaldo and you see what, how he inspires a nation, you know, more kids want that and more kids want to follow in that footsteps because they just think that's the life they want and that's who they want to be and that's all it takes. It just takes one person to inspire a nation. Lisa Devanna, it's amazing just to look at her and see how far she's come. All the girls know her name and men too. <laughs> Say 20 years ago they didn't quite have female role models to look up to and for girls like us it's just something that it is possible. Till the last time I ate your fish, I had to go to hospital. I didn't really have any real pathways till I was about 12, 13. My pathway was playing with teenage boys and getting the shit kicked out of. <laughs> I'm still that player that's come from a, a, that old school generation to this new generation. I'm still trying to find the balance of it and, it. and it can be hard because I still have that old school mentality, but I still want the, the, that new, new generation for the girls. A lot of what I had was determination, grit, and pure natural talent. Uh, Portuguese um, tradition. Yep. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.